Radical. All right, so quickly, just going to go over two things I would never do on YouTube. I would never do personally on the platform, never have done, will not do, and will never do in the future. What are those two things? There's actually three things. The third thing is I'll never stick to a consistent upload schedule on the comment reply shows. I'll never do that. <laughs> never do that. Uh, by the way, another Radical Rapid Fire coming later on today. Still trying to catch up there, right? Seven days in a week. Figure if I upload two or three, maybe a day. Five or six. Maybe we'll get caught back up eventually. Well, I'm just kidding about the third thing. I, I do honestly want to try to be consistent and get caught up. I do. That's goal. Personal goal. Maybe 2025. Possibly. But the two main things I will never do on YouTube. Number one is I will never shill for a product I do not personally believe in. For me, people have different definitions on what they think shilling is. For me, if I tell you all that Magic Spoon is the best freaking cereal you've ever had, and it is such a great value at $10 a box, I would obviously be lying to each and every one of you. I would be lying to each and every one of you for a kickback from Magic Spoon. And guess what? I'm not doing that. Some people will argue and say, listen, these content creators, they need these sponsorship deals. They desperately need these deals so they can survive and get money. Well, part of that deal is you're straight selling out your own audience unless you specifically mention in that upload that it's being done just because you need money from these people giving you money. Otherwise, there's different levels of shilling, but it is technically shilling. So, what you can do is, if you love something and you use it every day, and you believe in it like I do spray away glass cleaner, then you can gladly promote spray away glass cleaner. You know why? They, they, don't, even, they don't need promotion. It's such a great glass cleaner. They don't even need promotion. It's so damn good. Usually under three bucks a can. Last you forever. Even good on rims. Not just good on glass. Good for just about everything. So there's my promotion for spray away glass cleaner. Now if there's another glass cleaner that works not nearly as well. That said, hey Radical Rick. We heard you talking about spray away glass cleaner. Uh, would you possibly consider talking about our product? We'll give you a bag of cash or a couple quarters or something if you talk about our product. Then I'll say, only if it's nearly as good as spray away glass cleaner, I will. Why would I want to sell you all on inferior glass cleaners? It's just a, an example there. So shilling is not one thing I'll do. Shilling for something I don't believe in personally. The second thing I will never do is I will never e -back. I will never be involved in, I will never even entertain the idea of e-bagging my own YouTube audience. Now, what people feel is e-bagging, what most people feel is e-bagging might not be exactly the same thing as I feel is e-bagging right now. What most people feel to be e-bagging nowadays in 2024 on YouTube is far and away the more classical sense of it the more literal sense. Whereas you have an upload and you ask people for donations directly. You clasp your hand together, hands together and you tell people that you're behind on the house payments. You've invested a lot in YouTube, which could not, you know, it could be truthful that you invest a lot in time on your YouTube channel, your uploads, the lighting, the set, which could be costly. Yeah. I think it's gr grossly overestimated when it comes to YouTubers when they talk about how much it costs to make their uploads. But that's direct e-begging. If you ask your audience, hey, I need money to continue to make these uploads, or hey, I just need money to live on, then that's what most people would call out and say, hey, 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 you're an e-begger. But then there's other different types of e-begging. And people may vary in what they feel, easy begging, like I said. People may vary in what they call it. 
seeking donations, maybe having things like Super Thanks or your Patreon link or things of that nature. Uh, YouTube now has a built-in Super Thanks, for instance. Um, YouTube pushes it, by the way. So in many cases, the person might not think even what they're doing is wrong. And there's a discussion, too, how you feel about eBay in different types, if, if it's right or wrong or whatnot. That's a discussion in itself. But YouTube is heavily pushing that onto creators. I, a couple days ago, got a pop-up from YouTube telling me that I could enable my super thanks. So that's heavy. You know, I don't even know if I click on something wrong and then YouTube enables a super thanks because I accidentally click on something. I don't know. I don't know to what lengths YouTube itself will try to push me to try to start e-begging. But there's a heavy push right now. It's not a couple years ago when Patreon was the method of e-begging. Now it's integrated into YouTube. E-begging essentially is a person, a creator, accepting donations from their audience. That's all it is. It's accepting donations from your YouTube audience. Now, the level of which people will consider that to be a perfectly just thing or a more morally wrong thing is a side discussion. But it is what it is. That is e-begging. Sometimes people will say to me, hey, Rick, you know, that's not e-begging. That's not e-beggery. At the very least, it's low level, like entry level e-begging. It is the lowest like tier of e-begging. And then there's higher tiers of e-begging. Well, what's a good example? I would say, uh, any of you know Silent Rob, right? Years ago, Silent Rob basically wanted to get money. I forget the details. But he basically wanted to get money for an engine to put in his little Fiaro. His little Fiari, Fiaro, whatever you call them, Pontiac cars, right? And he wanted to get money or an engine. I forget. He was sent money or an engine or some shit, right? And he had YouTube upload basically talking about that. And I apologize because I don't remember the details because that was years ago. I just recently talked about in the RGT85 upload where Metal Jesus said he, uh, you know, this basement leak of his was going to cost a lot of money. Then he had a Patreon link and people were going to his Patreon in his comment section saying, hey, we're going to chip in. We're going to donate to your Patreon. So there's many instances of that. On that spectrum, or, or let's say uh, Camelot 331, don't call it, when he was getting up money to fix a NASCAR of his, that's e beggary. But that's higher level e beggary, for instance. Gerard the Completionist, I could go on and on. Those are higher level of e begging. But what you see mostly now is you go to a channel and you see that they might have a super thanks or a Patreon link or something of that nature. And that's more normalized e begging. We'll just call it that. It's normalized e-begging. It doesn't mean that person is morally reprehensible. It doesn't mean that person isn't a fine, upstanding individual in their life. It doesn't mean that they are to be reviled and um, castigated. Is that the word? Maybe it's not the word. From society. It just means that they're probably just being pressured and pushed into it by YouTube itself, by some of their audience that say, you should get a super thanks, we would donate. I mean, you got to understand as a creator, there's constant pressure into becoming an e-beggar. The pressure is there constantly. So it's not like it was 10 years ago when the beginning of Patreon and all that kind of stuff. It's different. Now it's so normalized, it's hard to find a channel, you're hard pressed to find a channel that doesn't at least have some type of low form e beggary integrated, is what I'm saying. But just me, for me personally, two things I would never do. One is shilling for products I don't personally believe in because I don't want any of you buying a product that I'm pushing that's going to break or be crappy or not what you need. Because I respect you all as my audience. I respect your time here. And number two, I would never e-beg for my audience. I would never take any donations from any of you under any terms. Some of you might argue, hey, you've entertained us for several years. 
We just want to give you a donation. We know you're spending your time on the channel. We know you've uploaded over 3,000 uploads for us, for our entertainment. So here's a buck or two. I don't vibe with that. I appreciate my audience. I want you spending your money on things that you need for your life, especially in this terrible American economy that we have right now. And for me, I feel lucky that a lot of you are spending your time coming here just listening to me. I feel lucky to have low-key made friends with a lot of you through the years. I feel lucky to be able to, you know, share tips and tricks on in video games and in real life with a lot of you. And I feel lucky and fortunate to, on my channel, have some of the best comments ever left on YouTube. Even though, like I said before the other day, it's getting harder and harder to even leave comments on YouTube. So ultimately, I feel very just lucky to be where I am in life and on YouTube and to have shared the experiences just from me crafting my entertainment style and becoming a much better commentator through the years on YouTube. So those two things I will never do because I appreciate and respect all of you that come here, essentially, right? Um, but again, when it comes to e-begging, <laughs> you're hard-pressed to find a channel now in 2024 that does not in some way, shape, or form dabble in it. So sometimes I feel like we, we talked about The Last Gamer the other day. Which was a weird name for him because he wasn't the last gamer because people are still gaming. If he's gone from his channel, people are still gaming now. But I kind of feel like sometimes on YouTube, like I'm the last non beggar.